Good morning, God's people. This is Sunday, September the 25th. This is our hour of worship. We welcome you around uh, the video uh, for the service this morning. And the psalmist call to worship this morning is from Psalm 62 and verse 1. My soul find rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. May the Lord help us as we worship this morning to have the realization that our soul will only find rest in Him and that our salvation is coming from God and God alone. God's word to us this morning is from the book of a psalm, and we will be reading this morning Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Please turn to God's word with me in Psalm 46. Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its water roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there's a river whose stream may glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at, br at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The word of the Lord to us this morning. This is the time of the worship. We turn to the Lord in prayer. And uh, as I have always said, that prayer is the lifeline of our worship. And uh, we are to be totally depending upon the Lord for every step, everything that we, we do. And in worship, it's no different that we are totally depending upon him. We want his presence to be with us this morning. Please continue to praise God with us as uh, uh, next Sunday would be October the 2nd and uh, we will be gathering uh, together for worship. The address of the worship and the place will be sent to you in our church chart so watch out for that and we are looking forward to be meeting together and worship the Lord together please uh, tell each other that the time has come we will be worshiping together next Sunday October the 2nd now let us uh, continue to to pray uh, and ask the Lord for our young people and our children 
let us continue to pray for them. Let us continue to pray also for the uh, for the presence of COVID-19 that is still around us, that the Lord will help those in authority to do the very best they can for all of us. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. You have your own burden that you would like to take to the Lord, the burden of the family, the burden of sickness. Let us take it all to the Lord in prayer. Please join me as we pray to the Lord this morning together. <clears throat> Father, as we enter this hour of worship, open our hearts that we may receive the fullness of your grace. We seek more than breath itself and encounter with you so that our spirit may be encouraged for the living of our days. Lord, come to us and meet with us here this morning as we worship you. Father, you have been our resting place through all the years. You have been our refuge and you have been our strength. Before we knew about the world in which we live, we learn about you. From our earliest memories, we have known that you are everlasting to everlasting. While we tend to get lost in the details of our living, we rejoice that in you we can find the greater hope, the grace abounding, the care that lies in the heart of all things. We thank you that you have opened up a place for us and things has changed and now our authorities are allowed us to meet together and worship together. We rejoice, O oh Lord, for the means of grace in our lives. We pray especially this morning for the youth. O oh Lord, as they return to university and to high school and colleges, we pray for them. We commit them to you. We pray for the children in our means that you will guide them in all their ways. Be with the parents as they try to find ways to provide for each and every one of them. We pray for the teachers that are working with them, the teachers that are even a part of our congregation. We commit them to you, O Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are afflicted, those who are sick. We pray for those, O oh Lord, that, uh, that are brokenhearted. We commit them all to you this morning. May they find a refuge in you. We pray for our seniors, O oh Lord, that their refuge will be in you. They will find you to be the strength that they need to carry on each and every day of their lives. We pray, O oh Lord, for this COVID-19 that has been with us for so long. So long according to us. But we know that in all your ways, in all your ways, you know what is best for us. So we have the confidence in your own time you will provide for us. You will give us the break we need from this illness. Lord, teach us to make use of every day that we may have a heart of wisdom and be set free from the frustration of fearing the future. As we wait before you, 
strengthen us inwardly with the true assurance of your unfailing love. Let us sing joyfully with the rhythms of life, making for gladness in the world all the days of our lives. We humbly ask you these through Christ we pray, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. <clears throat> Please turn to God's words as, as I've mentioned and read to you in Psalm 46. The title for God's word to us this morning is Responding Properly When Trouble Comes. And my text is found in Psalm 46 and verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In the NIV of the Bible, it is read, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. It is not if trouble comes in my life and in your life. It is when trouble come in my life and in your life. What kind of responses that comes from us, even though we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, when trouble comes in our lives? Or can we really be sure that we will be genuinely Christian, remain Christians, when trouble crosses our pathway? Or you may say, Pastor, who knows? No one really knows what will one do when trouble comes in their lives. Well, listen, this is why we are digging into God's words this morning, because there got to be a preparation in my heart and in yours when trouble comes. How would we respond? How would you respond? The Christian has no immunity from catastrophe. The Lord has not vaccinated us against trouble. Believers experience disappointments in their careers just like anybody else. Some believers experience great heartbreak because of differences of opinion with their husbands or wives. And sometimes children are the occasion for great distress of mind and heart in the family and then for us. Conditions and circumstances in the community often contribute to our unhappy state of affairs in our lives. Disease, just like COVID-19 and cancer and, and many other diseases, can strike down the best among us. To cope with trouble, many secure health insurance, in spite of the fact that we live in a country where the health insurance is provided for us, many of us don't have to worry if we are sick. Can we see a doctor? Can we pay for it? Can we go to a hospital? Our country has been so generous to us and has provided us with universal health care. But still, other secured liability insurance, just in case there is a disaster, there is flood, there is fire, there is earthquake, 
that would destroy the things that are around us. Many people purchase life insurance just in case something happened to them and uh, that they have a family that the family will be taken care of. These are all forms of coping with the financial difficulties that you and I face in life. Have you developed a technique for handling trouble when it comes? What do you do when trouble visits you? What do you do when trouble enters the family? What do you do when trouble is in the community? What do you do when trouble is in the church? These are the things that we are looking forward to the Spirit of God to help us to prepare ourselves. First, this is what you don't do. First, avoid faulty ways of dealing with trouble. Do not hold God responsible for any trouble that might come into your life. The enemy of our soul, the devil himself, is always there and present. When trouble comes into our lives, he is suggesting very strongly to us to curse God and die. He has presented that to Job's wife. Job's wife presented that to her husband. Let us not be uh, the, uh, the, dev the devil's advocate. Let us not be like Job's wife. When trouble comes into our lives, we must never give in to the temptation of blaming God for it. God is not a a mean God who takes delight in our trouble. Do not resort to resentment and hatred towards people when trouble comes in our lives. Some people care, call it the blaming game. That when trouble come into our lives, we go ahead and blame each other and blame everyone around us for the trouble. Refrain from doing that. Resist the feeling of doing that. Do not surrender to self-pity neither in despair when trouble comes into your life. The worst thing one can do is to really not looking at life the way God would want them to look at it and, and start pitying themselves. Why me? I've been good and I've done this and I've done that. Why would all these pain and trouble come to me? Self-pity can be very destructive. It can really send you to despair, to discouragement. This can be destructive and it never provides the pathway to healing and happiness. Do not seek escape through the anesthesia or of alcohol or drugs or relationships. Refrain from doing that. Do not give in to this kind of temptations that if I only take some alcohol or if I only take some drugs, it will numb me, it will numb my feeling feelings so that my trouble will go away. If I only get into this relationship with this or that person, my trouble will go away. Avoid those faulty ways of dealing with trouble. 
because oftentimes they bring more trouble instead of taking away trouble. Secondly, face trouble with faith in God. In Psalm 121 and in verse 1 and 2, the psalmist tells us, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains or to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, he said, the maker of heaven and earth. Trust in the goodness, in the power of God for help in times of trouble. Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, Paul said, I can do all these things. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yes, when trouble comes into my life and into your life, we must trust in the goodness of God and we must trust that God can help us and God will empower us to go through it. Paul affirmed that God works in all things to bring out good for those who love and trust him. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 and we know, Paul said, that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Paul also affirmed that God will not permit any trouble to come to us that we cannot endure with his help. He expresses that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, Paul says, No temptation has overtaken you except that is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Yes, God is a provider in every way when we are in trouble. He will always come through for us. Discover and depend on the promises of God. Remember the hymn writer when he said, Stand on the promises of God. I am standing on God's promises. So when trouble comes in my life and in your life, it is a time to remember God's promise to us and to stand on those promises. The psalmist repeatedly encourages us to wait upon the Lord. He finished Psalm 27 by saying, wait upon the Lord, be of good courage, wait on the Lord. Good things, we said, happen to those who wait. We must discover and depend on the promises of God when trouble come into our lives. Accept God's forgiveness and be forgiven towards others. We had a wonderful time in our Bible study last Wednesday, reminding us of the power that God has given His Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to forgive sin. My sin and your sins are forgiven because the Lord Jesus Christ said so. 
We must believe that Jesus Christ, God's Son, has the power to forgive sin. When we come and confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We must believe that in the times of trouble. Because the adversary, the devil, always will, will come and say, you deserve your trouble because you are a sinner, you have done this and you have done that. If you have taken your sins to the Lord Jesus Christ and you have confessed them to him, you must believe your faith must go into actions in time of trouble and say to yourself and to those accusers all around you that I have taken my sins to the Lord and he has forgiven me and I know that he has all the power in the world to forgive sin. Yes, when trouble comes, it brings all kind of thinking our ways. When trouble comes, it is not a time to resent others. It is a time to learn just as God has forgiven us that we learn to forgive others as well. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who trespass, who sin against us. Yes. If your trouble comes because of some fault of your own, and oftentimes we have caused ourselves, we have inflicted on ourselves our trouble. Life is a series of decisions, and sometimes you and I happen to have made the wrong decision at the wrong time and it comes back to haunt us. If trouble comes into your life because of the fault of your own, accept God's forgiveness then. The hardest thing sometimes for you and I to do is to accept the forgiveness that the Lord has given us so freely. If trouble has come because of someone else's fault, the Lord Jesus Christ strongly, strongly asks us to practice forgiveness one to the other. If you have someone that have wronged you, if you have someone that have said the wrong thing to you and have done you the wrong thing. The way forward is forgiveness. Forgiveness towards that person. Life, 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 and, and the way God has given it to us to do it can be a lot better for us when those principles of faith, trouble with faith in God live life one day at a time. Yes, this is a lesson to be learned. I have learned this lesson in a very early stage of my life through the sickness of my dear wife. I have learned from the Lord all these years to live one day at a time. The songwriters sing to us, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I am asking of you. Make that true in your life even today as you share and listen to God's words with me. Search for the good at all times. Look at the glass half full, not always half empty. Have a positive out attitude towards life. 
That's a positive attitude towards your friends and your family. That's a positive attitude towards the brothers and sisters in Christ, in your church. Have a positive attitude towards your co-workers. Search deep within your soul for the good at all times. Something good can be found even in the darkest days of our lives. And there are many who have left us great examples of that. That in the midnight crisis of our lives, there is always something you and I can find to be thankful for. There is always something that God has sent our way to cheer us up. To help us to know that he's with us. Face trouble with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. With faith in God. And if you are listening to God's words with me this morning. And you have not placed your faith in God. And in his son our savior Jesus Christ. Do not go on in life this way. Choose Jesus. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive the gift of faith that he has come into the world to give. And then when trouble come, you will find that faith will be able to take you through it. Thirdly, develop a plan for enduring the pain of trouble. We cannot go on in life and not have a plan how we're going to deal with the pains of trouble. Troubles, troubles are painful. They are hurtful. How do we do that? I have a few suggestions that I want to give you this morning to help you to deal with with trouble when they come, when it comes in your life. I have for you seven suggestions based on the Word of God that will help you with trouble. I hope you have a pen or a pencil that you can write them down. First, listen to God's in Bible study whether it is personal Bible study or when you gather in your church with your group or when you come to Zoom whatever it is whether you come to church on Sunday listen to God listen to God when you open the Bible because He will give you the advice he will give you the direction. He will give you what you need to face that trouble and to conquer it. Second, let God speak to you through beautiful sacred music. I don't know what the world would have been like if there was no music. Those, those beautiful praise and worship songs that lift you up. Those wonderful hymns, sacred, that are designed to lift up your soul. And one of these hymns, often when life is giving me some trouble, I often think of and even sing in my head, O oh Lord my God, when I am on some wonder, consider all the world your hand has made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, your power throughout the universe display. 
Then sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! That God speak to you through beautiful sacred music. Number three, praise God and be thankful for his blessings upon you. In the means of the trouble, in the means of the pain, find God's goodness. And his goodness is there. Praise God. It seems that when God's people get in the spirit of praise, troubles find its rightful place out of your life. Praise God and be thankful for his blessings. God has blessed us people in the means of COVID, in the means of our pain, in the means of all the trouble that we have come to know, God has remained faithful and he has been good to me and he has been good to you. When trouble comes, let us remember that. Number four, recognize God's angels who come to you in the form of helpers. Someone told me, it wasn't even that long ago, they were struggling with a very big snowfall that they thought they wouldn't have the courage to take care or shovel of that snow. Right here and there she said, I bow my head and call upon the Lord for help. And then suddenly she saw an angel coming from the Lord that says, I was thinking of you. I am here to help you with the snow. Recognize God's help in the times of trouble. Give him the praise and give him the glory. And let that person know as well that you have been God answers to my prayer. Fifthly, grow your faith daily by trusting God. This is something that you and I can do. Daily, it is my duty, it is my task to grow my faith in God. Do the things that will grow your faith in the Lord. Sixthly, let a friend be a friend to you in time of trouble. There are a lot of friends, you know that they are not friends because in time of trouble, they will run away from you. The friends that will walk away from you are no friends at all, especially when you are in trouble. Friends come closer when we are in trouble. What are friends we have in Jesus, the hymn writer said. Because when we are in trouble, the Lord Jesus Christ come near us, he come close to us. Be a good friend. If you have a friend that is in trouble, that is going through a hard time, this is no time to settle any scores with them. It is a time to go beside your friend and help them through the trouble. Seven, follow the light that Jesus Christ gives. In John chapter 8, in verse 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 
follow the light follow the Lord Jesus Christ in your days of trouble in your years of trouble in your times of trouble he will always give you light because he will never lead you into darkness all of us would like to avoid trouble and we have done our very best to avoid trouble but trouble will come much trouble can be avoided if we will trust Jesus the Lord the Christ and follow his guidance and help day by day as he provided for us some sometimes trouble comes upon us in the form of catastrophe over which we have no control yes when those trouble comes we must remember today God's word to us God can help God can help God is willing to help God is ready to help my brothers and my sisters my friends what we need to do is to learn to trust him may God in his mercy help us as we learn to do that may the Lord do it for you as he do it for me to learn to trust him in times of trouble in the days of trouble that he will always be there with us and he will rescue us if rescuing is needed shall we pray together now may the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us as we go out to live and to serve in our homes, in our schools, in our businesses and throughout our community. May the love of God be lived through us now and forevermore. Amen.